Hello again, guys. Right, um, I've just got back from uh, an hour or so break, and I am just off out for another couple of hours. But um, I just thought I'd point out this um, reversal potential here, and what I'm what I'm looking for at all times. First off, I'm looking for something that's um, well above its ADR, five day ADR in this case. I mean, you can have this set to five days, four days, 10 days, whatever. Um, and then I'm looking for obvious sort of areas that uh, suggest that the price might be overextended. Well, we've got R2 here, pivots uh, calculated on the daily pivots. You've got R3 up here. Uh, you've got this massive discrepancy here, you know, getting on for nearly um, 200 or two times 200% its normal ADR. And uh, then we've got the gap between the uh, hourly 8 EMA and a few other things to watch out for. This I would expect to be a potential stopping area, old uh, resistance broken, tested as new support potentially the pivot as I said before, the half round number. So what I'm always looking for is gaps to trade and areas, you know, that's why I'm a scalper. I just don't like drawdown. So all I need to do then is just draw a few levels on there. The H4 reversal level is this um, candles low here. Um, that H4 support there, the, the current candle would be a problem as well, of course, because I'm, you know, I'm a great believer in the power of the highs and lows of candles, just for scalping purposes. There is the high of that H4 candle there that needs to be um, on there as well, and you might think, oh my God, there's so many levels on here with this low ADR as well as opposed to sort of something like GBP. NZD and uh, all these euro pairs, the Aussie euros tend to be, you know, closer to 200 pips. So you're going to double your potential gaps, you know, 11 or 12 pips as opposed to five or six, I suppose. So then we stack or put the H1 level on there. I'm talking about the reversal level now to attack these levels below. H4 is a strong levels which is why I put the highs and lows but in here we've got the three candle reversal low low high high low high high I don't really bother with the hourly uh, low like I did on the H4 because um, you know you're going to over populate your chart with levels M30 um, I do like to see as well just to see if there's any sensible gaps but uh, I'm not so bothered about M30s again and obviously if this price moves up above this high all of these apart from some of the H4s can be taken off and you redraw them clean your chart down redraw the whole thing so M15 would be the level that I look for for the the first potential of a strong reversal I don't want to be trading in an M5 reversal I'm talking about the three candle reversal here so M15 so first um, indication of a potential trade to the downside would be an M15 three candle reversal and then the I would want to see this as red and it's worth mentioning at this point I don't often mention this either that I don't want to be taking the first 30 minute to, or considering the first 30 minute even if we get the 15 minute reversal and everything you know you have to there is an element of discretion here obviously there is an element of discretion in every trade you take but we're trying to minimize that and eliminate that and have so many tick boxes here that uh, rather than keep you out of trades it just reinforces the confidence to hit the trade so one of the tick boxes has to be don't uh, really consider entering on the first one much same as what's happened here first red candle it's continued up second or bar should say second red bar uh, it did continue up and then finally we've got that reversal going on there not a valid three candle reversal on the M15 because that would have been had to have been that low there um, and obviously at this point the ADR was nowhere near uh, overextended that was probably actually created by the 
you know the, the limit the hundred percent if you like and then it's gone on and up in fact it wasn't it's was probably only about 30 uh, 90 percent 80 percent probably about 35 pips from the start to there because we can clearly see that's bigger but anyway I digress so now we're at a point where you would look at your M5 well let's look at the M30 see what that's doing let's just say for argument's sake that had closed red M15 for argument's sake was down here and you'd expect then to see the M5 in this sort of scenario here where you've broken down you've pulled back and then you've broken and closed or you've busted down pull back and then break and close so in this instance the break and close would have had to have been below there uh, somewhere down here and uh, and then potentially getting into the trade so we've got to see definitely below the zero level then the green bar and then the pullback uh, well the green bar is the pullback and then the bust the bust the pullback the break and close okay so that's it and that would be a nice gap um, there because at this point you'd probably have pulled back above the 15 you so you, you, your candle closes there that's the 15 minute hypothetically I know we're on the five then you get your pullback and uh, then you've got to attack the M30 level or the H1 level which if you start you know got an entry with your uh, break and close then you've got uh, 10 pips down to the uh, what's it take your spread off and stuff uh, and uh, I generally take the entry a little bit short of that level so there you can see why you've got six or seven pips um, to um, exploit there and that's it so if this continues up just keep uh, moving the levels and look for the best gap so you know AJ is in a similar situation to this pair um, big move up 83 as opposed to 60 and uh, you can draw the levels on the same and the whole point is then you can see which is the best gap so I mean we can quickly draw the levels on this one as a refresher if you like so reversal level which is the low of that red candle the actual low of the H4 which is there you've got that potential resistance that's going to cause you a problem so ideally if you get an M15 reversal you don't want to be trading into that resistance you want to close through that I didn't make that clear in the first part of this video H1 same thing there's the low there and um, we can leave it at that M30 start to observe our um, RSI histo this does look like it's got further to go up yet once again we've got R2 somewhere above us there so we can stick the M30 on there that point there then the M15 there and uh, then we can start to observe the M5 as you can see M5 is not even busted uh, below zero yet pull back break and close in a perfect world if it breaks and closes below the minus 20 or the opposite on the upward if you're looking for longs above the 20 that's even better because that shows there's momentum in the move so bust, pull back, break and close, ideally below but not not absolutely necessary and uh, there you're good to go. So in this M15 the gap to the, the next level looks pretty similar to be fair. 10, so it's slightly less but uh, there you go. So that's two possible, um, I shouldn't really call them end of day reversals but they do tend to happen at the end of day. I noticed this the other day we had the massive moves and in fact the reversal took place uh, very early on probably uh, at the, um, the, the sort of the same hour as the American Open so that's it guys thank you for watching and have a good day